How did Jelly lose 92% of his audience in only two years? Did the content become repetitive, boring, and unremarkable? Did he become too focused on unimportant things outside of YouTube? Or was his decline the direct result of Jelly's highly successful trio eventually coming to an end? We're going to provide a step-by-step -step explanation for why Jelly's channel hasn't been doing so well, which is most easily understood if we discuss how he became successful in the first place. When Jelly created his first video on the 3rd of June 2014, he had already been making videos for around three years on two prior channels, and as a result, he had already built up some fairly significant skills. For example, Jelly clearly understood the basics of branding with almost every thumbnail featuring a clear element of green, which also helped Jelly to release his first line of merch only three months after beginning the channel. However, the point at which things began to get serious was when Jelly became one third of what came to be known as the Robust Trio. In the beginning of the group, the only two significant members were Jelly and Quebblecock, who had already created a couple of viral uploads. It's me and Jelly, and we are playing on, like, this is crazy viral video. 14 million views. Quebblecop then explained that he and Jelly realized that they could go viral by simply having a fun time together, which became significantly easier after the two announced that they were moving into a house together. Me and Jordy are checking out a place. This is the place where me and Jordy are hopefully going to live. And while Jelly and Quebblecop were already getting insane views as a duo, it would be after adding a third member that things began to get crazy. Slogo Man or Slogo appeared on Jelly's channel for the first time in a video titled Sailing with Monster Trucks, and after this video received an above average view count, Slogo became a regular part of the group. Since they played GTA 5 more than any other game, they'd collaborate and grow together in almost every single video. With Josh there, there was a, a much better chemistry. Jordy is always the one who's probably the best at the game. Josh is always the annoying one, and I'm always the one that rage quits. And I feel like that's a good chemistry. It, it works very well. Which resulted in Jelly reaching a million subscribers only 12 months after creating his channel. Yes! I saw it! I saw it, baby! Meanwhile, Jelly, Quabblecop, and Slogo were becoming closer and closer friends every single day. And in the meantime, just having banter, just roasting each other, and, and we were we were very close friends. Like, we spoke to each other every day, you know, we were there for each other every day. We knew everything about each other. It was just so much flipping fun. With the fun nature of the content helping them to innovate into making real-life videos. We can do videos together in real life, and people like that even more. This one is 23 and a half million views. As mentioned by Quabblecop, some of their real life videos performed unbelievably well, such as this simple five minute Q&A on Slogo's channel, which to this day has received over 17 million views. Over on Jelly's channel, almost every vlog he'd post was equally popular, and as a result, Jelly passed 5 million subscribers only a year after hitting 1 million. By 2019, Jelly was gaining well over 200 million views every single month, helping him to receive his diamond play button and purchase a $6.5 million property in Monaco. However, while it was clear that Jelly was in a better spot than ever, 2019 would also mark the point at which the robust trio began to fall apart. While Jelly and Slogo continued to collaborate on numerous different gaming videos, Quebblecop instead began to focus on reaction content and therefore began to appear in fewer and fewer of Jelly's videos. The robust trio was dissolving in front of everybody's eyes, but it didn't actually have all that much of an impact on Jelly's views, which if anything only continued to grow after Quebblecop left. By taking a quick look over Jelly's content at the time, we can see that he still had an abundance of different games to play, he was constantly innovating with new ideas, titles and thumbnails, plus in January 2020, Robust became a trio once again after Quebblecop was replaced by a YouTuber named Craner, who had the most subscribed channel in all of Denmark. Three months after Craner joined, Jelly was able to achieve his highest monthly view count ever at 511 million in May 2020. However, you don't have to be an expert in data analytics to see that after May 2020, something began to go horribly wrong. Now, we should begin by stating that there was unavoidably going to be some kind of decline from his 500 million view high point as almost every gaming YouTuber was going through this same early 2020 viewership surge as a direct result of the pandemic. So if we ignore these views which had come about from people simply being at home, the real decline of Jelly began in early 2021. To cut Jelly some further slack, we should also highlight that Minecraft Among Us and GTA 5, the three main games that he was making videos on at the time of his decline, were well past their peak in popularity on YouTube, and therefore you could definitely make the argument that the first reason for Jelly's viewership decline 
online was that people were simply getting bored of watching these games, which is a problem still faced by the gaming genre today. There haven't been any hugely popular game releases after Among Us in February 2021, which was basically the same month where Jelly's views began to decline. Therefore, the most popular games that Jelly can play are Roblox, Among Us, Minecraft, and GTA 5, all of which are years beyond their peak in popularity. Jelly has clearly noticed this problem himself, judging from one of his tweets reading, can GTA 6 just be released already? With a possible motive for this being that Jelly is tired of playing the same old games on his channel. This might also provide an explanation for why Jelly's content has become a lot more repetitive and far less innovative. Back when his views were exploding in 2019, Jelly was pushing the absolute limits in terms of ideas, thumbnails, and titles, which as mentioned previously, was aided by the abundance of different popular games. These days, however, it feels as though Jelly isn't pushing these boundaries in the same kind of way. The ideas, thumbnails, and titles feel almost identical to where they were three years ago, but they're now being applied to less popular games. Then there's the problem of the content itself, which in all honesty just doesn't feel like there's that much effort going into it. Sure, the editing on each video is fantastic, but they give off the vibe that Jelly's just played some random game for 30 minutes, sent the footage off to his editor, and taken the rest of the day off. Now, I'm sure that this certainly isn't the case, but for some inexplicable reason, Jelly gives off the vibe that he isn't as committed to the content as he used to be, which is an absolute necessity for the growth of a channel. It's no coincidence that a creator like Mr. Beast is constantly going out of his way to reiterate that he wants to be doing YouTube for at least another decade. He's signaling to the audience that he's in it for the long run, and he knows that as soon as you stop committing to your YouTube channel, the audience will as well. Meanwhile, Jelly does the opposite to this by stating that he sees his own channel as being dead. I'm not on this list. Where on this list do I belong? I consider myself pretty dead. Hey, I, I consider myself to be at the dead category as well, all right? I'll chill with you over there. And to make things even harder for himself, Jelly makes it very obvious that he's distracted by unnecessary things from outside of his channel. Now, we're going to make a point that's somewhat similar to the one made in the Quebble Cop video, being the foolishness behind sharing a luxury lifestyle to social media, although we're going to approach it from a slightly different angle, because if anything, it's worse in the case of Jelly, as he's so obviously distracted by ego-related purchases. In early 2021, during the same time period where his views began to decline rapidly, Jelly announced that he'd purchased a $10 million boat. At the start of this summer, I actually ended up buying myself a nice boat. In the very same video, Jelly explains that he's also purchased a green Lamborghini Huracan. I also bought <clears throat> a Lamborghini to go with his already existing Lamborghini Urus. And in September 2022, Jelly posts another video explaining that he's bought an abandoned mansion, which looked as though it needed a fair bit of work and a lot of time away from being committed to YouTube. Uh, it's a bit of a mess. I, I didn't make the mess. Okay, I just bought it like this. So why is this a problem? I see so many business people get burned and what they do is they start making some money and then their lifestyle just creeps and it grows into this massive hungry beast that then consumes them. And what you've got to be very careful with is you can't let the byproducts of your thing distract you from your thing. This is a principle that someone like Mr. Beast understands perfectly. He's always voicing his disdain for luxury and anything that removes the focus from the growth of his channel. On the other end of the spectrum, you have someone like Jelly, who seems to be searching for distractions, and it's clearly having an impact on his ability to produce top quality content. For example, in July 2022, Jelly uploaded a video titled This Isn't Working Out, in which he'd explained that after many years, he was no longer able to produce two videos per day and was instead going to start releasing just one. Starting now, I am gonna quit posting two videos a day. This was justified by Jelly stating that the quality of each video should increase. Lowering the quantity should up the quality. At least that's my goal. If I can spend more time on a video, that video will turn out better. Although the quality didn't actually change much after posting this, meaning that Jelly was simply uploading half as often as before with minimal change to the substance of the videos. Then there was the collapse of the robust trio, but for the second time. We mentioned earlier that Quebble Cop, who had close to 15 million subscribers, left the trio in 2019, but was instead replaced by Denmark's most subscribed YouTuber called Craner. Well, Craner continued to play with Jelly and Slogo for roughly two years. However, like Quebble Cop, he also began to appear in fewer and fewer videos. In May of 2022, fans noticed that Jelly and Slogo had removed any mention of Craner in their video descriptions, leading everybody to believe that Craner had been kicked from the trio. Well, four months later, Craner would take to his YouTube community tab to make the following announcement. Too many theories out 
out there about why I'm not recording with the guys anymore. And I thought, although I always like to keep private, why not just address it so people don't get the wrong idea? Jelly and Josh are great people and I wish them the best. Last year and also somewhat into 2022 was the toughest time I've gone through. I lost my dad, came out of a long relationship with my ex-wife around the same time too. As most of you know, this resulted in me not recording for weeks or a month at a time. The guys were very understanding and sweet. However, no drama happened. I didn't use them to garner attention then leave. And for people saying I just use them for views, wouldn't it make a lot more sense to stay recording with two of the biggest creators on the platform? I think so. I wanted a change and I wanted to do my own thing for once. This post not only confirmed the end of the trio, which had made Jelly so successful in the first place, but it also felt like the death of innovation and authenticity on Jelly's channel. The robust trio represented a time when Jelly seemed passionate about making videos, as is highlighted in old comments such as, I enjoyed it more when they were actually having fun instead of just acting for family friendly. However, while this comment represents the tragic decline of a much loved content creator, it simultaneously shows just how much of an impact these three legends had on the content creation sphere and the lives of millions.